my friends, it is feeling like it's about time for some K-Beauty speed reviews, a follow-up to my hauls. I am also going to include in today's video some product recommendations from all of you. I keep a note of all of your recommendations and wow, you all have some very good product recommendations. As always, timestamps and links will be in the description box below. Let's dive in because we have a lot to talk about. Do you want to start this video with some J Beauty? I have a very exciting update. If you saw my J Beauty speed reviews, I talked about this sauna wrinkle jelly cream. I said that I really wasn't able to use it. It wasn't a good match for me. It is so funny to sit right here where I sat in December, where I said these same things on this same camera. I remember so well sitting here and going, you know, this might be a perfect texture for my partner. She has different preferences from me. She uses skincare very differently from the way I do. So I thought, I'm gonna tell her she can try this. And do you know, she has tried this, and not only is she really enjoying it, but oh my goodness, she cannot stop talking about her results. It's so funny to think about this, but here I am, this big skincare enthusiast, and my very own partner is not. She uses cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. That's it. We really have opposite approaches, which is fine. You know, everybody's skincare routine is their own. But what I know about her preferences is that she does not like to feel skincare on her skin. She hates the sensation. She hates the sensation of skincare. She wants things to be simple. I was sitting here in late December going, this might be perfect for her. She does like retinol. But a lot of the retinol products she's tried, she hasn't enjoyed because of the sensation on her skin skin. So I guess she started using this product in about January. It is now almost March. That is a pretty good time span to see the results of retinol. Within this past week, she cannot stop telling me how happy she is with this product. She, I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. <laughs> I told her, if you're going to be this excited about skincare, I have to share this with my subscribers. So tell me what it is that you like about this product. She says it's easy to apply. It's thick but dries down. It is not greasy, although she pat dries it. I asked her to define pat dries, and I'm still unclear on what that means. <laughs> no clumpy texture, and it smoothed her skin of friction. Friction. Only she didn't say friction. Thanks for the autocorrect phone. Okay. Her skin is glowing and softer. <laughs> Can you imagine how fun it's been to watch somebody really enjoy their skincare routine, to see results from skincare? Oh, it is so exciting. <laughs> And what's so funny about this is, this is J Beauty. I've talked before about how J Beauty is not as popular as K Beauty on a global level. And if you saw that video, you know that I theorized the inclusion of denatured alcohol is not appealing to everyone. But keep in mind, that does make for a lighter texture in a product. And she's picky about the way skincare feels on her skin. Incorporating alcohol carefully into a formula can really make it so the product feels very lightweight on. My bottom line with telling you this story is it's just so funny to think about how this didn't work for me. This was not the right product for my skincare routine. But that does not mean it was not the right product for other people. It turns out that my very own partner loves this loves it dearly. And this is a funny contrast because before you think that all J Beauty has ingredients lists like the sauna I just showed, this is one of the products that you all recommended to me. Multiple people recommended this J Beauty sunscreen and it is the Kiss Me Mommy SPF 50 plus PA 4 plus UV aqua milk. Oh, look at those ingredients. We have talked about J Beauty sunscreens on this channel before, and most of them do have alcohol and fragrance. This doesn't. And by the way, this is also meant for children. That's why it's named what it is. It is supposed to be a gentle sunscreen. But please know, because I, I have had this question before, 
Adults can use sunscreens that are for children. They're just typically more gentle. I have to tell you my honest experience with this. I'm happy with it. It's a beautiful sunscreen. Do not get me wrong. But it also was so funny to use a J Beauty sunscreen that is formulated in such a gentle way because it almost felt like I wasn't using a J Beauty sunscreen. It almost felt more like a K Beauty sunscreen. No white cast, blended away, beautiful to wear, no, no problems from this. But it had a little bit of a stickiness to it. I think a lot of you will be happy with this sunscreen and it does have a great price point. That's something I noticed with J Beauty sunscreens. They are very affordable, especially on Stylevana. Really quickly, the three requests from you all were gifted by Stylevana. I will include their links. I did notice that the link for this was broken, so I'm going to include the set of two. Two of these are $15 on Stylevana, which is an incredible price. They might be sold out of the one option right now, I'm thinking, because I couldn't find it on the website. And let's just talk about one more sunscreen while we're here. This is one that is probably pretty predictable for most of you. Remember when I tried this? This is the Sum 37 Sun Away Multi Effect Sunblock SPF 50 Plus PA++++. Yeah, you see that ingredients list? <laughs> so this didn't work out for me as basically everyone predicted. <laughs> we inevitably are going to talk a lot about ingredients on this channel. It's the way my brain works and a lot of you appreciate seeing the ingredients list. That's why I do it. A lot of you share, you know, sensitivities, maybe not the exact same ones as mine, but sensitivities regardless. And so I think a lot of you can also relate to looking at that and going, oh, that's a, that's a lot going on. Kind of seems like a lot of things could go wrong there. And yeah, that tends to be true for me. You know, I, I was looking at the ferments in this and thinking about how I reacted to the Numbuds and 3 toner. I know that so many people love that, but I have a difficult skin type. Not to mention that that does have essential oils, in including my allergen. It was it was maybe not the smartest idea to try that. <laughs> I feel bad though because a lot of you have asked me to review more brands like Sum 37. Uh, you know, I've done History of Who, Suwasu, uh, Chogong Jean, but not much more. And there's a lot more of these brands that are geared towards a little bit more of a mature audience. But I'm noticing that it might be a little harder for me to review those because I'm reviewing those as a person with sensitive skin. Nonetheless, please know that I'm trying. Let me look at my latest order. These brands looked a little bit better and I'll review these whenever my haul arrives. I have noticed this was a Yes Style order. It is taking a while to ship. But I ordered from Yewadum. Oh, am I, am I Southern american -in that? <laughs> Yewadum? It's got, I've got to be close, right? And also, oh, why? I'm gonna try. I love the inclusion of these hanbang ingredients in a lot of these brands, but I, I do have to be cautious. This next product feels a bit related to what I was just talking about. This is the Abib Jericho Rose Cream. This was another subscriber recommendation. A couple of you have recommended this. Oh, how I see why you have. I've talked before about how, you know, the whole reason I'm looking into K-beauty brands for mature skin is that a lot of the K-beauty brands that you see discussed on YouTube are kind of aimed more towards 20-year-olds, maybe, maybe early 30s. Your skin does get more dry as you get a bit older and you need thicker creams. At least some people do. This moisturizer... I cannot believe how thick this is. This is what sealed the deal for me. The second I tried this, I wrote that poll on the community tab. I do feel like the final results of our poll were that you want reviews of all four of the brands I asked about. <laughs> so we are going to set aside this cream and do a full Abib review. Feel free to let me know what other products you recommend from the brand because what I can tell you is at this moment, I have tried their Heart Leaf Essence, Finished a bottle, loved it, repurchased that. Because I know we're gonna do an Abib trial and I was very happy with that. And the overnight sleeping mask, which impressed me so much more than I thought it would. I am hoping that that will be how I end up feeling about Abib. Impressed me more than I could have imagined. We have the April Skin Carotene IPMP Hydro Melt Cleansing Balm. This is another product that a lot of you have recommended. 
Y'all are so funny. You love this cleansing balm because it is exactly like the pharmacy cleansing balm. At least that is my theory. Oh my gosh, it is so much like pharmacy. So you have this incredible scent in this. People like scent. It doesn't mean scent loves us back in all cases. Right, fellow sensitive skin types? But we like a good scent. It's human nature. And this does smell very good, and it's thick, and it's creamy, and the packaging is super cute. You get the lid that comes with your little scoop. It emulsifies, removes all of your makeup, removes all of your sunscreen. It is a little bit more expensive. That's something I've noticed with April Skin. They're just a little bit more of an expensive brand, but I think they get the experience part right. And it's okay to like the experience when products actually work out for you. For me, I can use fragrance ingredients in a wash off product just about all the time. There have been some exceptions. There have been, but usually I can. And I also want to make sure to update you on the Peslo Spicule Reborn Peeling Mask. This product was sent to me by the brand and I was so nervous I made a short about this. This product also contains sponge spicules, which you've probably heard of via the VT Cosmetics Riedel Shot, except this is a wash off product and I feel like everything I'm saying in this video is connected to the last thing I was talking about. But also for those of you that watched Dr. Dre's video and I know a lot of you did because you all told me about it. Yes, her concern with the VT Riedel shot is leaving the Riedels on, the needles on. My problem with it is that I could feel them all day. It just kept stinging. It was it was not comfortable for me to use that product, but with this, it just feels like a physical exfoliating mask. More intense than the I'm from Mandarin mask that we talked about in Monday's video. Definitely more intense, but not too much. And you know, I really believe the trick with physical exfoliation is you have to find the right level for your skin. You might want very gentle physical exfoliation. You might want more. Make sure that you still are using a gentle hand, no need to push really hard into your skin. And then finally, not everybody needs physical exfoliation. You may find that you individually do better with chemical exfoliation. But as I said in my de-influencing video, I'm happy I can finally try this category, this idea without my face hurting all day long. <laughs> Let's briefly talk about a few makeup products I had fun doing today's look, if you can't tell, and I do wanna talk about this makeup. First of all, I'm saying this is a haul follow-up, but I do have to admit that I never did an initial haul of these products that I bought from the brand. Oh, it's this brand. <laughs> this brand. How would you pronounce this brand name? Because so far I've seen Maggie Tang call it Florte, which overall makes sense to me. I saw Judy say that for some reason this brand is pronounced as Florette. She did say for some reason. <laughs> I might be paraphrasing a bit, but to her surprise as well. You know what this brand name reminds me of? How many of you have been into makeup long enough to remember what happened with Lorac? This brand, quick story time, I'll make it short. So this brand was really popular, what, eight, 10 years ago at this point? And whenever beauty gurus would talk about this brand, you could be guaranteed that you would find in the comment section someone saying, Actually, you're not pronouncing this brand name correctly. It's French, it's pronounced Le Roch. Well then, Carol Shaw, the owner of Le Roch, came on Reddit and did an AMA, and one of the top questions was, how do you pronounce this brand? And she said, well, it's kind of open to interpretation as it's Carol backwards. It's her name, backwards. And from that point forward, I have never and never will again ever corrected anyone's pronunciation on anything because you never know. You think you know. You heard from someone else that Le Roc is a French name. No, it's Carol backwards. <laughs> Was that a turning point for some people, especially those of you that remember the AMA? <laughs> Let's talk about the products. So I admit that I've never hauled these before because when my order arrived, I actually felt a little let down. It, if I had done a first impressions, it would not have been super positive. It's that for as cute as this was, and I had seen this in quite a few YouTubers' videos. Oh, it's so cute. I bought a little palette of all mattes in here. 
The problem is, even though I'd watched YouTubers say these are very small products, I was not prepared for how small they are. Does this help demonstrate? Are you getting an idea of how small this is? And I believe it is about the same, if not less, product in here than the e.l.f. Bite Size palette. Quality-wise, it's fine. It's just that this was also over $10 at the time I bought it. And uh, I just, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared to <laughs> see something this tiny for the $10 that I had virtually sent off into the void. But see, I'm glad I didn't just say this in a very negative way because I also bought this. This is a bunch of lashes and I love these lashes. These up here in particular, I love these so much. That's what I'm wearing again today. I've started wearing these underneath my lashes. Sometimes I do the semi-permanent lash glue and keep them on for a couple of days, sometimes just for one day, but they're so easy to wear. At the time I bought this, it was about $13 for all of these lashes, and truly I feel like these actually look better than Kiss Falscara, Velour. Those are very expensive. These fit my eyes better. And you get cute little cat packaging. You know, that's this is always the detail with cute packaging. You love the cute packaging if you also love the product. And one more product for today's video, just one. This is the Kaja Lip Oil. I did the exact opposite of what I told you all to do in my de-influencing video and bought a duo of these as opposed to, you know, a mini. I don't think you could make a mini of these because they are, they're pretty small. Not excessively small, 0.13 fluid ounces, but they look a little smaller. I bought two of these thinking, you know, I love some products from Kaja. Surely I will love their lip oils. And <sighs> there's a little heart in the lid. I don't know if I will be able to pick it up on camera. No, too much light reflection. There's a little heart gem in the lid. It kind of looks like a bead you might put on a bracelet. But we're back to this situation of a product that is cute. It's not necessarily a standout lip oil. It's fine. It looks like it's worn off. I was wearing the raspberry refresher shade. It's nice to apply. It does have a little bit of a minty scent, but it doesn't have that intense plumping feeling. Uh, cute color, you know. I wish it lasted longer, but that's true of just about all lip oils. It's just that these are $18 at Sephora, and I wouldn't buy it again. <laughs> and I think this is my problem of fine resurfacing. I don't have anything blatantly terrible to say about either one of these products. They're fine, but I wouldn't buy them again because there's so many products out there, and I just feel a lot are better. They're either better or you get a better value or, or both. The e.l.f. Bite Size eyeshadows are very good. And my friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope I managed to keep up with these speed reviews, even though we also talked about Carol Shaw. <laughs> Feel free to share any thoughts you have in the comment section below, which I will try to keep turned on. I have no idea why YouTube keeps turning the comments off on our R&W video. Ari and I both are so frustrated by it. Hopefully no more comment section problems as I want you all to be able to comment. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all next time.